Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 26th episode of the ClickView podcast. I'm Bill Karp, the self-proclaimed ClickView answer man, and this podcast is going to be about section access. Now, section access can be a really complex topic, or it can be really simple, depending on what you really want to do with it. Um, so since probably about 60-70% of the customers out there I've worked with just want something simple to get started with, you know, to get their ClickView implementation working, I'm going to start out with a simple uh, version of section access. Uh, since the complex version takes quite a bit of time to to create and, and maintain and such, what I'm going to do is I'll put some of those on the premium podcast section. Uh, but this should give you a really good start and let you know what section access is, give you a, a good a few good examples on how to actually implement section access. And it is going to start getting into some scripting here. So what I'll do is I'm going to create a dashboard completely from scratch. Now it won't be a full feature dashboard or anything like that, but it's just going to be a very simple dashboard and I'm just going to say file new from the menu and start creating the dashboard from there. So you can do this whether you whether or not you're licensed for ClickView, uh, you can follow along with this. Now besides that, something else, I've always wanted to just start writing down the rules with, with uh, section access. So I have a Word document here and I can make it a little smaller, I think. Let me make this a little bit smaller. And that will allow us to actually just start uh, writing down the actual rules that we run across the section access. This is a whole bunch of little tedious rules inside section access. And it's just going to be helpful to have this document. Okay, so let me open, fire up Clip View here. And we'll just create a brand new click view file. So I just said I just clicked on the new button on the upper left hand side and we're going to save that and I have a path saved over here. This is actually the path that goes out to where my click view server is looking at files. Okay, so we have version 1 saved, click section access version 1. And to get some data in here, we're going to need a little bit of data to work with. I'm just going to do a real quick trick trick here, and that is once I go into the script editor, I'm just going to press control Q Q. And this puts some script in here. So you see the set variables are already here, the default variables. Then right underneath there it puts some some tables in here and it just generates them automatically. So you see the auto-generate statement and and things like that. If you don't know what's going on here with the scripting, we haven't covered any scripting at all. So if you're new to scripting, you know, just realize you can just press control, hold down the control key and press Q twice. And when you do that, you'll get this script to pop in here. And when I reload it, just click the reload button. Now remember, I saved it already. And so that I could just save it and click the reload button. When I do that, I get a bunch of fields. These fields were just added by that script. And so if I just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to go away, um, the developer toolbar is here. If you don't have this developer toolbar, you can just right click and turn on design, the design toolbar, not necessarily developer toolbar. And on the right hand side, we have this table viewer. So I know I'm going a little bit fast here, but I don't want to give a, a total overall uh, tutorial on how to use a script editor. I want to get to the section access part. So that control QQ put this transactions table in here and then two dimensional fields in here and actually I generally put the transactions on the right hand side but uh, so we have transactions now the dimensions are stuffed here in the transactions table I'm not sure exactly why they did that but but they did and then we have the expressions here in the bottom as far as the the actual numbers that we can use so if I just put some of that on the, the sheet so I can put you know dimension one two three and expression one two and three out here and that's exactly what I get. I get the ability to, you know, we can see there's just numbers in the expressions. And in the dimensions, there's just dimensions. Okay, so I'll just move these around a little bit so we have a little better picture. You can see that everything's joined together. You know, want to put dimension one. 
we get the three different dimensions we get certain expressions that pop up and life is good so i'll save that that's what it is now there's two a couple of different things for section access now let me explain some of the overall things first and then I can get into the details about how to implement section access. Okay, so I just opened up a kind of a whiteboard uh, player here, this a bamboo tool here that I can actually use this kind of as a whiteboard when I'm work working remotely or just over the computer. And I, I'm just a big fan of whiteboards. So I like getting up and drawing things. If you've ever seen me in a, at a customer site, I'm usually I usually try and draw things with quite a bit. And I even carry my own whiteboard markers for the for the customers that don't have very good whiteboard. Anyways. The point being here is that there's a couple different ways to implement security in ClickView. The one way is to actually take a ClickView dashboard. You know, so we actually look at this and just say this is a, this is an actual dashboard. You know, with with the gauges in here, and we got our list box on the left hand side. So the typical stuff, um, and then we might have the charts. So this is you know my typical sales dashboard. There's a couple of different ways to do this. One way is we can actually take, and in the script inside of here, so we can actually put a section access section in the script. So when users, so you know, put the user out here, and he's a happy ClickView user. When they actually try and come in here, this acts like a gatekeeper to get to the dashboard. Right. So that's one way to actually make this happen. A second way is if we take Publisher, and so we actually take the dashboard up on the top, and then when the publisher pushes this out to the server, and our dashboard is here, instead of the script being included in the dashboard itself, publisher will actually take some of the security settings, and apply it during the move. And then so the, the security settings would come down here and you know so the security would be around the whole document. Right? Now there's a couple of differences here and each way can at a very simple level can really look the same and in the end it could either allow users in or not allow users in but then each section also has different features. So for example, if we just look at this this top one here, if we're just saying, okay, level one, we just want to either allow users to come into the click view or not allow users to come in, right? Both of these methods work really nice. If we're trying to limit the data, kind of level two, limit the data to for a user to see just certain rows of data, then section access might be a little better solution if we want to keep the dashboard all together and I'll explain that in a second here so and then the third level is if we only want users to see certain objects on the screen you know certain tabs certain um, charts and graphs and such then we have to go with section access so let's just start writing some of this stuff down so when to use okay so we got publisher security And then we have section access. Okay. So as I mentioned, when okay, when you want users to only see certain sheets and objects. Um, so that's the that's the the first thing there. The second one is. If, if the users, if these individual users, if you only have five or six users that you're trying to uh, put on a single dashboard, then both of these are pretty much identical, right? Because you have to go in and define the users, you know, which ones to allow, which ones not to allow. And so either one, it's not a big deal, um, especially if you're only using one or two dashboards. On the other hand, if you have hundreds of users and you really don't have a, a common place to store them, then section access might be easier because you could load that in from like an Excel sheet or a database table or anything like that. Some other uh, security model 
you can load in your list of users, which users you want to gain into this dashboard and which users you don't want to gain into it. So you can just say, um, So that's another one. Because if you were to do this in Publisher, basically Publisher gives you a little pick list. And you have to include each individual user into that pick list. Where section access, it's going to be a load statement, much like a database table. Now the best part about this between Publisher Security and section access is if you have three or four or five dashboards that you want to apply to the similar security or the exact same security to, well, then we only have to include a couple, that same load statement in two or three or four or five dashboards. If you do it in Publisher, then you, you know, an administrator, somebody has to go and pick all of those users for each of the dashboards, and it's just the maintenance is much higher. So. So if you're applying the same security or similar security off across many dashboards, this may be less maintenance. Now, we've talked so far about publisher security and section access as far as adding individual users, but the next basic question is, what about Active Directory groups? And when I say users at this point, I'm considering Active Directory users. That's what you know. 90, 95% of our customers actually use. They, they have an Active Directory system out there, and they want to do single sign-on from Windows, and, and so that's what this, is, uh, this works really good with. We can integrate LDAP, but that's a, an entirely different conversation. So, you know, so the LDAP is definitely, it can, it can work similar, but we need to hook to the LDAP. Of course, LDAP, every system is different. Everybody defines their own trees and stuff, so we'll just stay away from that for now. But for Active Directory, the next question is, instead of individual users, can I do Active Directory groups? And it's at, the, the answer is absolutely, especially if those groups, if everybody in those groups you want to have the same access or very similar access. If that's the case, then you can absolutely do it. Now, using groups, if you only have two or three or four groups defined, then maybe publisher security is easier because in publisher security, when you're using groups, you can go to every dashboard, you know, maybe two or three or four dashboards, and you can add the, the, the groups to that. So maybe we have three or four finance dashboards. And so all, for all three or four of those finance dashboards, we add the ClickView Administrator security group to that dashboard, and then we also add the finance group that's defined in your, in your Active Directory. Right? So then we, we add that to the dashboard, and then for there, we don't have to worry about anything else. As long as we only want them to see, either see the dashboard or not see the dashboard, that's it. We don't have to worry about anything else at that point. Because as people come into the company, as people move into the finance group or move out of the finance group, it's automatically taken care of. Because IT, somebody in IT that's handling the security, when somebody moves out of the finance group, they're taken out of that group in Active Directory. And then immediately ClickView sees that that person's not in the group. They don't have that finance group Active Directory uh, criteria, so they immediately do not get access to any of the finance dashboards, right? And also, it works really easy, so. Um. Now that does mean you still have to go into each individual dashboard and either define a group or not define a group. But typically that, you know, if you're defining groups, it's going to be three or four or five groups, and then you're done. You never have to add and delete. Now if we were to, to go in individual users, remember we said if we have a lot of users, 
then every time a user comes into the company, every time a user goes out of the company, then we would have to go into all these dashboards and make sure that user is set up right. And that's just, it's too much work, right? But in section access, we can put this in a database table or in any sort of thing. And there's also a new feature in Publisher, so we can list this out in Publisher just the same way. Uh, we won't cover that during this, this session here, but, uh, but we've covered that in the advanced sessions. And you can add or, or remove users from there, and then it's automatically added or, or subtracted from all the different uh, ClickView dashboards. So, okay, so we have published security. If you're using Active Directory Groups, a uh, good option. And then So this may be a good option for very large dashboards if the users are only viewing a certain amount of data. We haven't talked about this too much, but the idea is, if I go back to my, my page here, and let's just see if I can just clear this page. The idea is we have two ways to implement security when we start talking about reducing the data for users so that users can only see certain data. Everything up till now we kind of talked about either users get in or they don't get in, right? The next level is, should users be able to see all of the data? So we might have a North American sales manager, and he wants to see all the sales in North America, but not internationally, right? We might have a salesperson in North America, and we only want that salesperson to see the sales that he's actually performed, or all the accounts that he's uh, performed sales with. And so, you know, we can actually make that happen uh, based on what we call dynamic data reduction which is a, a, a which is an item that actually goes along with section access. So what dynamic data reduction it does is we take this large dashboard and then we put section access on here, right? And then when our user comes out and we have two different users. And so maybe this is the North America manager and this is just a salesperson. So if we just look at this dashboard, you know, we're, we're looking at data from many different salespeople, right? You know, so if we just kind of logically think of it this way, so this is salesperson one, this is salesperson two, salesperson three, et cetera, all right? And so maybe these salespeople are in North America. So that's basically the idea is that we want North America to go in. Oops. We want North America to go in and see all of this data. And we want this salesperson here to go in. And we only want this person, salesperson, to see this data right here. Okay. So we can make this happen in QuickView. The, if you do this in section access, what happens is this entire dashboard gets loaded into the server's memory in one big, you know, bulk set of data. Maybe there's, there's two billion records in here, right? So there's two billion. And maybe each one of these on average, maybe there's, there's five million records you know, per salesperson on average, you know, everyone's a little different, but we'll just kind of, you know, use that as a general number. So what will happen is if one salesperson comes into this dashboard, we need to load 2 billion records into memory into the ClickView server. When we load these 2 billion records, of course, that takes a lot of memory. It takes a lot of server resources. You know, there's a lot of processing going on and it's a load on a server. It's a, it's a pretty big load. When the, and so the ClickView server needs to, to use, maybe there might be 50 gigs of RAM that we're actually using with these 2 billion records. There could be 100 billion or 100 gigs of RAM we're using with, with the, the 2 billion records in there. And for one salesperson that's only looking at 5 million records, 
then we need to load all of those two billion records for that one salesperson. Now, as you can tell, that generally doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So we have another scenario where we can take and use publisher. This is something we haven't talked about too much. So, and then, so if I just make it a similar situation here, and I'll try and draw this out in about the same way. So we can use ClickView Publisher, and ClickView Publisher is an, a, a server software component. And if we just SB1, SB2, if there's a copy paste in here, I have no clue. Uh, this is a little bit of a new program for me. And again, so this is North America. So what we can do is we, we have ClickView Publisher in here. And instead of using section access, so we would get rid of, we would scratch out section access so it would not be section access. Now, in this dashboard, we still would have a list of the salespeople and the data they belong to and the North American manager and the data they belong to. So there'd be a little table in here. It would look very similar to the section access table. We'll get to the section access table in a bit, but there'll be a little table in here that maps and says, okay, this salesperson gets to see these attributes. You know, oh, in this case, maybe the, the customers that are assigned to him. And the North America manager would get to see all of the salespeople's data. So, so far, it looks very similar to what we have on the top. But it's quite a bit different in reality because over here, we've actually put this in the server, right? So this is, this is the server. This is not in the server. Over here, we have the server down here. We kind of moved it for me a little bit. And what Publisher is going to do, Publisher is going to take this one dashboard, and it's going to split it out in a couple, what could be a couple of different criteria. And what it will do is it will make a whole bunch of little mini dashboards. So this would be Salesperson 1 dashboard, and this would be Salesperson 2 dashboard. This would be salesperson three dashboard. And then we might have a different level, right? So that's one job that we ran to break this out. We would have another one for managers. So this would be for salespersons. This next one would be for managers. This might be a little bit bigger dashboard. And so this would be a North America um, manager dashboard. You know, of course, we'd have a couple other ones for the different regions we actually have. And then the very last one, then we would have the executive, which would be almost identical to this one here because we need to have everything in it. Um, it, with the exception that we probably wouldn't have near as many uh, users or we wouldn't have the section access to find anything like that. The point being is that we're breaking up and we're making a whole bunch of dashboards. Well, the best part is there's 5 million records in here. There's 5 million records in here and there's 5 million records in here. And maybe there's, you know, maybe there's, I uh, get rid of my little screen here. Maybe there's 30 million records in here, right? So what happens when one user, when one user logs in, when this same salesperson up here, when this same salesperson logs in below, so that goes to SP2, we've only loaded this dashboard in. Now, has all the exact same charts and graphs is the big one. You know, publisher does that. Publisher says, okay, well, the layout's going to be identical, but I'm only going to include this 5 million records that this user can see. And maybe there's five or six users that can see this. And so when, when I get two or three or four or even five users to log in, five salespeople to log into the ClickView server, I've only loaded 20 or 30 or 40 million records for those users. So now all of a sudden, I can see that using Publisher on this bottom section from here on down, I'm going to get a much better server usage. I'm going to be able to typically save a lot of RAM, a lot of real estate from the server. On top of that, every time a user makes a selection down here, he's only selecting through 5 million records. He's not trying to go, like up in here, you can imagine, 
the response time he's going to get with, with 2 billion records is going to be a fair amount slower. Now, in the upper scenario, the ClickView server still tries to do a whole bunch of things to help optimize the performance. You know, it'll actually make an index table. You know, when this user logs in, it'll make its own little index table just for this user so that that user doesn't have to, you know, sort through all of the keys of all the 2 billion records. But it still has to go to all those locations in memory to pick up the data every time it wants to actually compute something. You know, because it's still shared memory. It's, you know, the, all of this is shared. In this scenario down here, one user only has to go through 5 million records. And even if I have 5 or 10 or 15 million records, every one is completely separate memory that it's, it's selecting through. So you can see the, you know, from the using publisher here and the publisher security, it's a similar scenario. We can still do the same thing, except that in very large database usage, when we can break the data up, it actually makes more sense. Now in this case here, we do have the executives still looking at the full dashboard, the full 2 billion records. So we might leave it that way. Maybe the executives aren't on all the time. They're only on very rarely. So that, that's great because we only have to load that big dashboard up every once in a while. Um, we don't, even if it is loaded into memory, if we have the executive dashboard loaded in memory and sitting there and we have maybe 50 users online, how many users do you expect are going to be the executives? Probably not too many. There's probably three or four or five or six executives online. Everybody else is salespeople. So you have 45 North American managers clicking around and, and salespeople on small dashboards instead of 50 people, like up here, 50 people all clicking around a huge honking dashboard, right? So it saves a lot of memory. So that's kind of our next rule here. Um, publish the security may be better for large Okay. Now we are not going to go through the publisher security here because we just don't have it all set up and we don't have that I don't have the exercises graded or anything. But I will go through the you know the the section this security up here on the top. So let's actually make that happen. I'll just get rid of my bamboo screen here. Okay, so we have our data and control T gets us you know, backs our transactions, our dimensions. If I click cancel. Now, once I go into the script, so far, everything you've seen in the script, there's two sections in ClickView. And the default section is called section application. Right? The security section is called section access. And we denote that by, by some of the key words. We actually tell ClickView if we're going into it. So I could just type this in here. Section access. Section application. And what ends up happening is everything between these keywords is now in the section access section. And this has a couple of, a couple of things that go with this. The first off, in section access, uh, so let's just start looking at the rules, section access rules. So all of the in the section access script will be fully capitalized when the script is executed. Right? So that's the first rule. Anything inside of here any you we write ABC ABC we'll notice that it is fully capitalized when the section access starts executing it's just the way it is click view just does that and they say it's for a security area I don't know exactly why or anything like that but they, they think it's a very smart decision so it's something we have to do that's the first rule the second one is um, that no tables 
or data in section axis can be viewed or access from section application. Right? So no tables or data defined in this section axis can be viewed or accessed from section application. It's an automatic process, basically. So we can define our user table in here. We can define some other tables to help define a user table, but then we can never use any of those ourselves. The system has to manage, the ClickView system has to manage everything inside of here. We can never see what's in there, and we can never actually get to it. Now, there's a pretty cool thing is you can actually go in here, comment this out, rerun your script, and then you'll be able to see what's in your section access table. And we'll do that here a couple times. But then when you actually want to make it work, when you really want to make it work, you have to actually comment this back out. That's the keyword that tells ClickView, hey, this is an actual section access. ClickView, when users log in, you need to bring them to this section access area and you need to validate them against these tables. That's basically what this is telling us. If you comment this out, it, as far as ClickView is concerned, it's just any old table. It's just a regular data table. Okay. So let's look at actually creating a section access table. And I'm going to leave this section access commented out. Now it's going to stick it back in here for me when I put this table in, but uh, we'll, we'll comment it back out again. So when I, I can go to the insert menu and I can say insert section access. And if I have a publisher authentication, author or publisher authorization, it's telling me, okay, my section access is stored inside a publisher. Now, again, I, that's something I mentioned that we are not going to have in this particular class. So we're going to do this in line at, at this point. So we're going to say section access, put it in line, and it comes up with a little wizard that says, you know, which of the section access do you want to define here? So we have basic user access table and we have basic NT security. And by default, we see the basic user access table is, is, is accessed. Now let me look at these fields on the right hand side. So if I click on the two different buttons, it turns these fields on or off based on you know the, the buttons. Now these are just the default settings. We can go in and we can add more things here. We can take things out. And I can explain each one of these. Each one of these, the first one is access. And now an access basically says, well an access actually says that whether or not the user that's defined in that row or the group of users, if you're using an Active Directory group, if that is an admin or if he's a user. And we only have those two roles inside of ClickView as far as ClickView is concerned. We can define other roles elsewhere. It's just that the internal system for ClickView says you can either become a user or you can become an admin, right? The only thing with an admin is an admin sometimes can see a little bit more data than a user and an admin can change other users' rights. Okay. Section access rules. Admins can change rights of other users. Users can only view We can, users can only, admins can only change the rights of other users while you're in development, right? You know, it's not something that you can change on the fly while you're in the, in the actual system, while it's on the web. Okay, so the next two lines here are user ID and password. And you see when I go to basic NT security, basic NT is Active Directory, basically. When I go to basic NT, it turns these off. This is just the basic user access table. This is if you're not going to use Active Directory. Now, we don't get too many people using this. The only time I've used this regularly is when I've... The only time I've used this regularly is when I define some backdoors and stuff. Sometimes we'll always want an admin password or something like that to get into the system. And so we'll use that... We'll use this user ID and password to actually define an admin. Now, I'm going to start off using user ID and password here for this example. And then I'm going to use that for this, this whole scenario today. And then all you have to do is realize that just take these columns out and put in NT name 
and or NT domain SID, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. And if you use these two columns instead, NT name and NT domain SID, then you don't have to use user ID and password. You know, it's one or the other. You can have all of these columns in your section access table. So you can be using a combination of basic user access and NT section access at the same time. Now this, the next, so user ID and password, that's pretty, pretty basic. The next one is serial number. And serial number is kind of a holdover to the, some previous versions of ClickView. It can still be used today. It's just we don't see it used very often. And what a serial number does is a serial number is basically a license code for your local ClickView developer. Now, most of the time, we don't see that anymore because we see people leasing the license from the servers. So you don't have an actual local license file. So that's why we don't see it anymore. Previous versions of ClickView, uh, version 9 and earlier, I think it's version 9 and earlier, um, you needed a license on, on the developer client to actually run it in developer mode. You know, it was something you did not lease from the server. It was something somebody gave you a license code and you had to type the code in. And so we could actually type in that code here under this serial column. And then you wouldn't have to worry about it. As long as you were using that license number, you just automatically got logged in and it worked out really nice. But we don't see that very often, so you could pretty much just ignore this serial column. NT name and NT domain said NT name is the actual name that you type in when you log into your computer. You can put the domain name backslash login name in front of it. If you do that, it's less secure. Okay, we get a lot of people doing that. You can do it, but it's less secure. And the the reason is is because let's let's say my domain is ABC Corp. You know, it's just ABC backslash BKARP, BCARP. So that's my, that's my login when I log into my local computer. Great, no problem. Well, if somebody steals the QVW file, we put on a thumb drive and we send it to somebody else. And if they know what my login is, they know my domain name, they might know my login, they can just create their own little Active Directory domain. It's pretty easy to do. You can make your little, and they can call it ABC. Right? And when they call it ABC, they put a user in there called BCARP. And when they do that, then all of a sudden they can open the dashboard. up. And so I try very hard not to put the domain name in that NT name column. Only put the actual username in there. And I'll show you the, the kind of the differences there in a bit. Instead, I use the NT name with the login without the domain. And then I use the NT domain SID. With the SID, is basically, it's a serial number. It's a big, long serial number. That your, that your domain actually has. Now the chances of, of me having the exact same serial number that you have, you know, are probably in the trillions, one in a trillion. I mean, it's just, it's just not going to happen. If it is, you know, start playing the lottery because you're, you know, you're going to be rich and you don't have to worry about the rest of the podcast. So, um, and then we have NT SID, which is the serial number of the actual computer. We almost never use this. And then we have an omit column. An omit column is the opposite of all the other section access stuff. So all the other section access actually tells about what data we can include for the users. So it's basically, it's an inclusive thing. Every record I give a user, we're adding another line of, of access to that user. You know, more, we're giving them more and more and more rights. But the omit is just the opposite. The omit is all of the data they cannot see. And this is at a column level. So the omit, I'd like to use a, a really good example is, let's say we have an HR application and our HR department's using it and it's, it's working great, but we want to let end users see some of their own information. But guess what? We're going to give this to all the managers so the managers can see all of the people that are under them. And we can't do that because we have social security number in the dashboard. We don't want to give every. I don't want to give everybody a social security number to all my managers. I mean, it's just it's something they don't need to see. It's not part of their job, and it's very risky. And to me, as an employee, I don't want all of my managers to see my social security numbers. Not that I don't trust them, but I just don't trust them. I guess. <laughs> so, you know, so we can include an omit field here. So what I can do is I can say the HR administrators, they do not have anything filled in in this omit column. But everybody else does. Everybody else has at least um, social security number column filled in 
in this omit column. And so what will happen is when I log into ClickView, I'm not an HR administrator. So when I log into ClickView, it gets rid of that column for me. And any of the charts and graphs that show that, it would be as if that field doesn't even exist. So it would collapse it, it would get rid of it, it would show it grayed out, whatever it, whatever the object does for that particular field, it would it would just get rid of it as if that field just didn't exist in the data anymore. And it's a really nice feature because you can get rid of those fields. You know, gross margin is another one, or maybe net margin, something like that. You know, gross sales, net sales. Maybe you want people to see at a certain level something, but you don't want them to see, you know, anything down the road. You know, you might show them costs, you might show them some revenues, but you don't show them actual margin. And so the average person, you can get rid of the margin. So you can show them costs and you can show them some other things. But then the managers, on the other hand, the executives of the company, we can allow them to see those, those numbers. So it's up to you on how you want to actually implement it and make it happen. But that's what that field does. So for this... So for this example today, I'm just going to use access user ID password. I'm going to say NT domain name, NT SID, and I'm going to click OK. And I get a table here. You can see this is basically like the, the ClickView inline data wizard. This is just as if I'm putting an inline table in. And that's what we're doing. We're just putting an inline table inside a section access. And these column names are key here. These column names are what ClickView actually uses to key off of for these different columns. Access is whether it's a user or a admin or a user. User ID is, well, my user ID. Password is the password, NT name, and NT domain SID. I only need the login name and the login serial number here because Active Directory is going to include the the password, right? They're going to have the password. Basically, ClickView, when you're using NT name and NT SID, ClickView trusts Active Directory. Basically, if I'm logged into a machine and I open up Internet Explorer and I go to the access point page, the access point is going to say, okay, who are you? And it says, oh, I'm already built. I'm BCARP. I logged into this computer as BCARP. And so it does that, what we call single sign-on, into the access point page. Access point says, you say you're Bill Carp. Great. I'm going to double check that. And so it actually looks at some of the NT tokens and validates it back to the Active Directory and said, is this person really Bill Carp? And Active Directory says, yep, that guy's cool. No problem. Let him in. And so it goes back into the access point and then it uses NT domain and NT SID to, um, to access, to allow access. So what I'll do here is I'm going to define a couple of users. So I'm going to say this is an admin, and I'm going to put admin as the user ID, and password is admin, right? And NT name and NT SID I'm going to put as a star. So the star here, now the star is different. Later on we're going to talk about stars in the data, but this is the stars here just for the NT name. So the, this, this is different than, than other stars that we're going to talk about. But basically what has to happen here is if I'm going to be authenticated against this record, then it means that every column in here has to be filled in for me to be authenticated. So if I typed in bcarp here, and if I was to you know, run this and actually apply section access and log in, I would have to be logged in as this computer is bcarp because it's going to do the single sign-on. This column is single sign-on. So it's going to log in as bcarp, and then it would also ask me for a user ID and password. So it asks me for both of them at that point. Usually we don't want to do that, right? Usually we either want to go single sign-on or we want to go password. So in this case here, I'm just going to put stars down. And we're just going to say user, and we're going to say user1, and password is user1. And you see I'm just not getting too complicated here with the uh, and then user uh, user user2 user2 and then star and star. Okay. So I have two different users. I have one admin. These columns on the very left hand side have to be exact. Right? Um, for one I actually had one time where uh, I had ADM 
and I had a small i and then an n. Now I did not have it here inside the script because if I did, when ClickView runs a script, it would capitalize the script. I had this out in a database table. And when I did that, you know, there was just that certain type of text where you couldn't really tell whether it was a capital I or a small I. So when I loaded this, let me just look down a little bit further. Let's see if I can, uh, well, either way. Uh, so if I just say load and I said, you know, access, access, comma user ID, comma password from section access table, right? So let's just say, for example, this was what I loaded. It looks well and fine because ClickView capitalizes everything, right? ClickView capitalizes all of the things. Well, I had a small I defined in the database, something like this. And for some reason, this one admin could not log in. He was defined identical with everybody else. I'm looking this over. I'm looking this over. And I, I spent, I don't know, half an hour, which seemed like forever, trying to say, why is this one person not allowed in there? And what ends up happening is, when you run this load script, ClickView, and let me just get rid of this, ClickView capitalizes everything in the script itself not the results of the script. So this script, it capitalized, but the data coming from this table, the data in these three columns, it did not capitalize. And so it came in as a mixed case and ClickView saw that and it didn't capitalize it because it was the data coming in through the load statement. And so because of that, it did not capitalize it. It did not see that as a, a proper name and it did not allow me to come in. So that's one of the things, one of the best practices if you're going to, if you're going to uh, load something in as access, uppercase every column. Just do it just out of habit every single time. Just uppercase every column. You know, do the user ID and password here the exact same way. Because if you don't, it might not work. So section access rules. Only the script text is kept. Okay, therefore best practice, load that in. Use the upper. So we don't need this in this case here. I was just showing it for an example. Um, we can see the section access was added automatically and the section application as well um, when, when I define this. Now in this case, I'm going to comment this out for the first time I run it. I can throw a section application in, that's a, that's a default section. I can define it 50 times and it's, you know, ClickView says, well, I'm already in section application, I don't care. So it, it, it doesn't matter if it runs across that and it's already in section access. And then we have our data underneath it. Okay, we have these stars in here. The couple of other things to take note of. The first one is everybody says, okay, well, where can I find my serial number? It, and, you know, it's a really complicated thing. Basically, just go put your cursor somewhere. You can put it, you know, in right in place where you're going to put it. And just put your cursor somewhere and then go to the insert statement and... Go down to Domain SID, and if you do that, it'll put the serial number. Now, this particular computer, I'm just using this uh, on my own personal computer, so this is not part of a domain, but this is part of my local computer's, you know, SID, basically, my local computer's. Yours will look very similar, but it'll, be, of course, be an entirely different value. 
So now you can see why making it a SID is much more secure than making it an NT name. Okay, so I'm going to run this. So we want to save it first. And then this is a habit. This is another best practice again. Now I have this commented out, so I could choose to ignore this, this best practice at the moment, but this is just a habit. Before you, you can easily lock yourself out of your own dashboard. And supposedly there's no way to get anything back in here. You can lock yourself out completely. There's no way to ever get back in here if you do that. One of the ways you can lock yourself out is when if you're using basic security like this, so we're using admin one, user one, I'm going to have to log in as user ID and password, admin one, or admin admin, or user one, user one, or user two, user two. So obviously I could just forget all these user ID and passwords, right? That's just the one way I could lock myself out. The second way is, let's say I was using that load statement, and I loaded everybody in in McChase, right? In this case, it's not. It's, it's no big deal. I mean, because ClickView is going to capitalize this text. If I use a load statement, then in memory, it's going to look just like this. It's going to be mixed case. Now, if you read the ClickView help system, if you read, if you talk to you know ClickView's tech support, you know on, on average, or if you look at the training manual, it all tells you that ClickView when it users basic uh, user authentication this basic user as far as clickview is concerned basic clickview security that it's case insensitive and that's completely wrong and let me say that again it tells you the manual everything tells you that clickview is case insensitive and that's completely wrong the reason it's completely wrong is when you log in when i actually go to the login prompt and we're going to see the login prompt later on. So when I go to the login prompt and I type admin just like this, what it does is ClickView actually does this. It uppercases it. Right? So it, it looks like it's case insensitive because it uppercased my text and in doing so it made it all capitalized. So if I'm loading this in through this through the script, it capitalized this, it capitalized this, life is good. We, we look at this and say, geez, we're typing a mixed case all over the place. And it's, it's, it's coming through. Well, it works great. It works perfect until you take this and you put it out in a database table and use a load statement. And you don't do that best practice of using the uppercase. If you get your data in here in all mixed cases, you will never, ever be able to log in using basic security. Let me say that again. If you get your data into memory, into the section access table, into memory under user ID as mixed case, because you went through a load statement, you will never ever be able to log in to your system because it's going to capitalize this and it's not going to match. It's very case sensitive. It's just, it's always uppercase. So just watch out for that. It's very, very important if you're using basic uh, security. Active Directory is not a big deal. Yeah. Active Directory doesn't care if you're mixed case. I mean, it really is mixed case. Okay, so the next thing is, is the you can lock. So the point is you can lock yourself out very easy. That's just one way of many hundreds of ways of locking yourself out of your own dashboard to prevent this. We do a couple of things. Before you run the script, don't use this reload button here. Click OK. Save the script. And then go to File and say Save As. And create a new version. Right? So now I'm in version 2. So I just, I just saved. I press Save in version 1. And I know I can get in there because I'm in here. Right? And then I made a version 2. Now in version 2 I'm going to run the script. Right? And it looks like it's running it so fast I don't even see the, uh, the editor running. So let's just make sure. Control T. Yep. Okay. So it's in here. So our, our table's in here. It's in here and I can see the table only because I commented this out. 
and I click OK. And now to actually, you know, to, to use the section access, I would need to log out, log back in. Since we're not using section access, I don't need to do that. So I have this, and if for some reason, and when I close this down and open it back up, if security was applied, and I lock myself out, I can always go back and open up version 1. Right? That's the point. Save it in an area where you can always get back into it. Because I've gone through, I mean, I've literally locked myself out of applications hundreds and hundreds of times. But it's all okay. Because I just go back one version, I have my saved code, I tweak it a little bit, I fix it, make it right, and then I move on. Okay, so we ran the code. If I look in the table, we have the right uh, the right fields here. Okay, I can right click and get a preview. I have admins, users, and passwords. In this case here, it is mixed case because I did not have section access in here, right? Because I commented this out, it allowed that mixed case to come through. So now we're going to actually play a little dangerous here. In this case here, we're going to try and put section access in here. Now we're going to try and log in as one of these three users. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to put a couple of text objects in the screen here. And I'm just going to right click, say new sheet object, and there is a text object. And here I'm just going to say equals OS user. It's a function inside click view. have to put the equal sign there. The equal sign has to be the very first character in this text object. I'm going to click OK, and here's my operating system user. This is what I would use if I'm using the NT name, right? So let me say that again. If I'm using NT name, this column here, this bill is what I would use in this column in NT name. This is my domain said so remember that big long string that came up that that's what represents home Dell at this point now in the case that I, I don't want this you know if I get rid of this and I want to put my domain and user ID in here it's something that I don't recommend but if you do this entire string is what you would put in NT name including the backslash if you put that entire string in there it'll validate it to this domain only. But the trick is that you could have a computer at home called Home Dell. I'll bet there's a billion of them. And some other bill out there, or just create your own, your own user called Bill, and you'll get right into this dashboard. It's, an, it's a no-brainer. It's nice and easy. But if I use my SID instead, if I ins put in here, I say insert domain SID, I'll guarantee you're not going to guess that number. And even if you do, you're not going to be able to actually change your domain to specify that number. It's a serial number of your domain. Okay, so we have that one and we have one more. So I just copied that and I'm just going to say QV user. The click view user. Right now it's a blank. It's still accurate, but I have not signed in under click view's basic security. So this user ID here is considered a click view user. The NT name is considered the operating system user. So depending on which one I log in as, one of the two, these two should be filled in. Actually, the operating system user will be filled in no matter who I log in as. That's just who you're logged in as. But then this one here, well, it, when I log in, it should say specify. So I'm going to click save. Actually, so save, file, save as. And so this is version 3. And then we're going to run the script. So save, save as, run the script. Just keep that in mind. Save, save as, run the script. And I'm going to, now Now that I ran the script, for some reason it's really fast. I'll bet the uh, the, the progress window is just opening up off screen here. I keep adjusting the size down to a smaller screen size for the for the podcast. So that now that I ran the script, section access is in there. Now it did not ask me to lock in. You have to close ClickView entirely. You cannot just close this QVW file. You have to use the red X on the top and close ClickView completely. So do I want to save changes to version 3? Yes, I do. Let's open up ClickView again and click on Access version 3. And now I get my user ID prompt. This is the user ID prompt. 
This is that section where it capitalizes whatever I put in here. So if I type in admin, it's going to capitalize it for me. So hopefully in my section access table, it's capitalized there as well. So I can say admin, my password is admin, and I'm going to come in, and now all of a sudden you see I have admin filled out here. So if I did not know that that the, the user ID, then I couldn't be logged in. So great, it's working. Now how can I tell that I'm an admin? So if I go to the settings and into the document properties, we have a bunch of tabs here, and I have the security tab. This is there's a couple of tabs that get missing if you if you're a user, but the security tab is the most obvious one. When you click on the security tab, this is what you are specifying users can do. By default, these are generally pretty much pretty good because things like let's say edit script. Should a user be able to edit script? Probably not. But do I care? Probably not. Why not? Why don't I care if the user is going to edit the script? Because my user is going to access this dashboard over the web, right? And users can't edit the script over the web. It's just a function they can't get a hold of. Now, what if they can download it? Because we, we allow users to download the dashboards too sometimes. You know, if the, if the dashboard allows for it, if the access point is set up that way. Well, if we do allow them to download the dashboard, then when Publisher pushes the dashboard out to the server, it clears the script for us anyways. Right? So it doesn't really matter whether we do this or not. Now, if, if you manually copy them out there and your dashboards on access point have the script in them, you can turn this off, right? So reload, same thing with the reload, exact same scenario. You can't reload on the server. Uh, when, you're, when you're browsing over the web, so who cares? You can't partial reload, you can't edit the modules, you can't save the documents. I think you cannot access the document properties. Um, we want to allow them to promote and demote sheets. Most people want to allow them to export. We want to allow them to add sheets. Now when they do stuff like this, when they add sheets, when they promote and demote sheets, things like that, they're using the online collaboration object, so they're not actually editing this dashboard, you know, as far as we're concerned. But we'll, we'll cover the online collaboration later. You know, typically we want to allow them to export access tab rows, allow uh, user reload, you know, so that, that's just some of the things we can do. And then admin override security. So basically, if I had, let's say I had edit script turned off, and I came into this dashboard here, I would not be able to get to the script. Even as an admin, I would not be able to get the script unless I turn admin override security, turn that on. Right. So I'll just leave it this set this way. You just keep in mind this security tab, if you can see it, you're an admin. By default, if you don't have section access defined, you're an admin. Let's write this down. Okay, so I'm going to edit the exit this, and I'm not going to save the changes at this point. And I'll go back into it, version three, and user one, user one, and I get in. So I'm definitely user one settings, document properties, and then you can see the tab row got quite a bit shorter. I'm only one line now, the security tab is not there. So that's because I'm a user. Um, close it, close click you down, come back in. Admin, admin, and we're all set again. Okay, great. Perfect. So let's do a little dynamic data reduction. What dynamic data reduction is, is dynamic data reduction tells what users can see and what they can't see. So as an admin, I want to see all of it. As a user, maybe we only want user one to see A, 
In user 2, we want to see B and C. Okay, so that works pretty good. That's We can make that happen. Now, so that's set as DIM1. Let me make this a little bit narrower so I can see all this. So DIM1. So the first thing I do, because it's going to capitalize all of this in here, right? And if I look at this, okay, our you know table viewer, our user table went away. If you remember, click view joins together columns by the column names. So the point here is if I want to join a user ID with a table, I can call it dim1. The trouble we run into is this dim1 is going to be capitalized when we run the script. And down here where we see dim1, it's not capitalized. So there's one of two ways of fixing it. One way is just capitalize it down here, right? But a lot of times we don't want that to happen in real life because, you know, we might be reducing this on region. Well, that's nice, but we don't want to take region and fully capitalize it. And then across all of our reports and all of our charts and graphs, region all of a sudden becomes capitalized. It just doesn't look very pretty. So what we'll do is make a second column. So I'm going to just, for this case here, I'm just going to say load. And I'm going to say load star comma dim1 as dim1, semicolon. Right. I could have also done this. The problem is if I do this, this one in the same record, this could be different than this one because it's randomizing this twice. And we don't want that to happen. Um, so what I did was I just did this uh, preload statement using the previous load and then said dim1 as dim1. So this star is going to load in all of these columns. So they're going to come through just like normal, every one of these columns. And then I'm also adding an additional column and saying dim1 is dim1. Okay, so that's fully capitalized. And here I'll just, out of habit, I'm just going to say dim1. Just make a capitalization. And I will have a second column of, of data here, but that's just a key. That's I use this as a developer to know which columns are are used in security. I know that DIM1 is part of security, period. When I look at the data model and I run this, I can see that it's part of security. And so let's add some columns, commas here. And so I just added a, col co yeah, a column at the end. And so for the admin, I'm going to put a star here. For the user one, I'm going to put capital A. For user two, I'm going to put B. And then I'm going to also just copy this row and make it C. Okay. So remember if I mentioned before, I said all of the records inside ClickView for section access are things that we're adding to the user's pile. So basically, ClickView will look down through here and it'll say, okay, I logged in as user number one. It's going to go down through and it's going to say, is that user? No, that's not user one. Yes, that is user one. I'm going to give them access to data A. Is this user one? No. Nope. Is this user one? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. You know what? The final result is they only get access to, to, to data A. On the other hand, when user two logs in, it's going to look down the list and it's going to say, no, no, yes, this user. So I'm going to add B to it, and then I'm just going to go down to the next row, and it's going to say, oh, that's also user B. I'm going to add C. <coughs> so now that user now has two records, or two types of data, and it just adds, keeps adding to the list. Right? And so user 2 should be able to see two pieces of record. User 1 should only be C1. Okay. So what do we do? So we're ready to we're ready to save this and run this. So again, I'm going to save. And before I do, this is one of the most common things people forget. And I forget it too, and I just forgot it until right now. There's also one other setting that you have to adjust. You have to go to Settings, Document Properties, and this Opening tab. And you have to say Initial Data Reduction Based on Section Access and Turn on Strict Exclusion. You're going to get a lot of people that tells you to turn strict exclusion off. And you're also going to say, oh, maybe that'll help, especially if you're running into debugging problems. 
And they're going to say, turn strict exclusion off. Maybe that'll help. They won't be so strict. And it is such a bunch of... <laughs> don't do it. It's, it's bogus. It's completely bogus. What strict exclusion does is strict exclusion allows you to... And I'm going to go back to my chart here. So when a user type, when a user type is an admin, and I'm going to underscore these ones too, because these are column headings. And when a user type is user, if I put a in the script, if I put a star in the script, strict exclusion says, give me all the data, right? If I put a null in the script, strict exclusion says, give me none of the data. Let me go back and show you in the, in the, the table. It'll make a little more sense here. So for an admin, I have this. Let's just say we have another manager, control C, control V, and we're just gonna say this is manager. And today, best manager gets to see everything. All right, so he gets a he gets a star. That means he's gonna get to see all of the data with strict exclusion. And with or without strict exclusion, it doesn't matter. Strict exclusion does not change the value of a star. Strict exclusion changes the value of a null field. Okay, so if I turn on strict exclusion, because I did not define anything in this dim one column, strict exclusion says you don't get access to anything because nobody told me what you had access to. If you turn strict exclusion off, what it will do is it will tell them that you get access to everything, which isn't very secure. Basically, it's a holdover from like version 6 and earlier, because version 6 and earlier, they didn't have that checkbox, right? That it was Everything was not strictly excluded. It was not strictly excluded in earlier versions. And somebody finally said, hey, guys, this isn't very smart. This is not very secure this way because when I put a user in here and they have no data, they get to see it all. And that's not what we want them to see. If, they, we, if we throw an average Joe user in there and they're not, they're not assigned to any regions, they're not assigned to any accounts, they're not assigned to anything, they get to see it all. Well, that's not very bright. So they, they added that strict exclusion flag that says, in this case, if you have nothing to find, you get to see nothing, which is a lot smarter. So if I want to go and I want to give this manager the ability to see everything, I need to put a star in there. And it even works here. I mean, if I go in and if I, uh, if I put it, you know, something like this, because maybe the manager assigned that, we can add an extra row. This could even be through an entirely different load statement. And I could add the star there. Maybe we have another table that just overrides managers or adds, adds overrides for managers. And then that manager would get to see everything at this point. So let's, uh, I'm just going to put a null in there. So the manager right now has nulls. He's not assigned to anything. So now we have three things to test. We have admins can see everything. We have users. User 1 can see A. User 2 can see B and C. And then we have a manager that should be able to see nothing. Click OK. Document properties. Opening. We have to turn on initial data reduction based on section access. This is what reduces the data. If you don't turn this on, you can log in all day long under every single person in there, and they'll all see all the data. This is initial data reduction based on section access. Turn on strict exclusion. Always turn it on. If anybody tells you to turn it off, tell them to come watch this podcast. Tell them they're crazy. It's an old way of doing it. It's insecure. Turn it on. It's not what's breaking your section access. If it does break it, you have something else wrong. This is just an, you know, a, a small side effect to it. Click OK. OK, I'm done ranting. And save. File. Save as. Version 4. Save. And then I'm going to run my script. 
and then we're going to save and exit and let's open this back up again section access version 4 okay so we have admin admin okay looks pretty calm we can see it all great no problem let's close that out let's get on the list here user one user one and voila user one can only see dimension one and if you notice I mean you can't clear it you can't do anything else that's all they can see they can't you know the, the B's and C's are not grayed out in the world and then all of the data that goes along with that is only being shown so we only restricted on, on dim one but all of this other data is also restricted by that uh, by that dimension because it's joined so basically we did a, an inner join if you understand the terminology we did an inner join in dim one and so it got rid of all the other data in that table and all the tables joined to it so that you only see that amount of data so let's check out uh, user two User two, user U S A R two. Okay, B and C, perfect, no problems. And then, what does my manager get to see? Now, if you noticed, it asked me a third time basically I, I mistyped manager the first time so it asked me to retype it in because it didn't see me as anybody in the list so manager I it typed in a second time so click OK here and it just tells me access is denied to this click view document if I turn that strict exclusion off if I turn it off he will see everything as if he's an admin which is a bad thing now I'm not going to show that here but uh, you can you can definitely experiment that on your own Okay, well, let's just go back in here. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Perfect. We're doing a dynamic data reduction based on section access. Users are only seeing the data that they get to see. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to go in. I don't want to have to type this in all the time. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this. And I, for the user ID, I'm going to put star. And for the password, I'm going to put star. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six columns here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the domain SID here. So I'm going to insert a domain SID. And then right before that, I'm going to type in bill. Could be all caps. Doesn't have to be. This is definitely not case sensitive. Okay, the combination of these, because right now I'm on NT name SID. So if we just line these up, this is user ID, this is password, this is NT name, NT domain SID, and of course the SID always breaks, and we're going to push this. Uh, and this is DIM1, right? So if this works, I should be able to just open the dashboard up. I should be logged in as this person. I should be able to see everything. I should be an admin. And it should not ask me to log in. Now, if this is one little, I, I don't know, trick, uh, this is a bad thing, a good thing, whatever it happens to be, definitely condition. If you log in, uh, if, this, if this authenticates you on any record, a single sign-on, so if it authenticates me in any record is single sign so if it uses my NT name for any record it will not ask me to log in most of the time that's a good thing right so if it sees me in here it will not ask me to log in so let's write that down So column name NT name.
normally that's not a big thing. Actually, I don't need to save that. Um, no, that's not a big thing because we want user IDs to come in and automatically log in. That's the whole point is single sign on. Click on the website, and go to it. You've already logged into your computer. And so if I just do this, I should be okay. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to say okay. I'm going to save this as version 4. Save it. And I'll explain why it's doing that in a minute here. Then I'm going to do file, save as. I'm going to say version 5. Save. I'm going to run the script. And let's look at it again. Version 5. Cross my fingers. You see, it did not ask me for user ID and password. It just logged me right in. And so I get all the data. I go into Document Properties. I can see the security tabs here. I'm an admin. And life is good. I no longer have to log in using a login password. Now, do I personally, generally, sometimes go in and put IDs and passwords, password in here? Absolutely. Because what happens if something happens and you know you cannot authenticate against any of the things from, from the Active Directory? So I generally do put some sort of backdoor in, into the systems. But some people ask not to. So, um, so it is up to the end users and what the, what the other people are, are comfortable with. I generally try and do it. Um, but, but it is up to you. Now, what I did was, if you notice, when I said save last time, it actually does a save as. And now, once you put section access in there, do dynamic data reduction, every time you click save, it's going to say save as. And, and why? And the, the point is, is that if you... S so, I'm not going to save this at this point. So, if I come in and if I say I'm user 1... I can't come in and say I'm a user one, right? That's the whole point. Let's go back to version four. This is before I did the single sign on stuff. So this is user one, user one, right? Now this person can only see one record in here. They're one dimension anyway, so a few records, but less data than all of it. When I open this document up, ClickView only loaded this amount of data off the disk for me. And, and this is really apparent. If you're working on a, on a big d development effort, there's obviously probably only you know 10,000 rows in this one. But if you're working on 100 million rows as a developer, it might take a minute to load, right? And then you log in as a test user, and that test user can only see one record, like for this one here. It can only see region A or dimension A. Well, when I save and exit, it only saves the data that you can see here back to disk. All of the other data gets lost. So if I save this right now, so I'm going to say save. It's going to say, do I want to save as? I'm just going to overwrite version 4 at this point. So I'm going to say, yes, yeah, save it as version 4 and go away. So when I come back in and I go back into version 4, I'm going to type go admin, admin. And all of a sudden, oh my god, my section access isn't working anymore. What's wrong? Well, that's, it is working. I was allowed to see all of the data. It's just that the problem is the last time I did a save, I only saved the data that I was actually looking at because of section access. And I could even go one step further where if you open this up again, section access version 4, if I say user 2 here, user 2, USAR2, Click OK. It says access denied. Why? I have access to B's and C's. Well, guess what? B's and C's are not in this dashboard anymore because I loaded it as, as user 1. User 1 could only see data A. And then I saved and exited. And when I saved it, it only saved the data for version A. It only saved the stuff that user 1 could see back to disk. And then when I try to log in as user 2, it says that user only gets to see B and C. And because I have strict exclusion turned on, remember that strict exclusion, then B and C doesn't match anything. And so we get to see nothing. If I had strict exclusion turned off, that user would see everything. And so you'd have a mess. You'd have a whole mess of stuff. So turn strict exclusion on. Make sure it's always on. And so I would basically need to go back into here as an admin, I'd have to reload the, the data, admin, 
admin. When I do that, I'll get my data back. And I know I'm breaking all my rules, saving back over top of stuff, but I'm just using it here for the podcast. Typically, I'd be, you know, doing something that actually mattered, and I'd be saving it as new names. So hopefully you've learned a lot here about section access. There's a lot of other things you can do with section access. There's just a ton of them. I'm going to start making some podcasts and putting them on the the premium section. So you'll see them coming out. If you check out clickviewpodcast.com, you'll be able to see which podcasts are marked as premium. You know, so you can actually look at them as far as the descriptions. Look at the the text before, before you actually subscribe to the premium content if you want to. There's a lot of things in there. So besides... Creating the dashboards, I'm also going to cover some good techniques about uh, debugging them. Because when they're screwed up, they're, they're just a pain also to, to try and fix. So hopefully that you've learned a lot here, and I'll call it, a, call it quits for the day. Thanks, guys. This podcast is made possible by the folks at Answer Sharks. Answer Sharks is a ClickView consulting company. You can contact Answer Sharks for all your ClickView consulting needs. For more information, visit our podcast at clickviewpodcast.com or at answersharks.com.